I thought I'd show my outfit. Anyway, um, I have this idea that if I wear nice earrings and interesting colorful scarves and that and you know interesting jewelry and I'm friendly that maybe people won't be uh, focused on my my aging process. Anyway, I uh, I was given instructions by my dentist and the hygienist. Um, they gave me a temporary crown uh, this week and they said don't eat anything crunchy or very sticky. I said sticky? You mean like oatmeal? And they said no, like taffy. Taffy. <laughs> I don't think they make a health food taffy. But uh, anyway, um, I love corn chips. So today I opened a package of frozen broccoli and uh, cooked that and after it was done I put in ten and a half corn chips I was measuring the amount of fat I was going to eat and ten and a half was like ninety calories from fat you know so I thought you know that was enough for the meal and uh, it turned out very good you leave it in the air like um, after it's the broccoli's done, you leave the corn chips in the air covered for about 10 minutes and they don't disintegrate like, you know, it doesn't look like cornmeal in the air. They, and of course you break them up. So it, it tasted like somebody had put macaroni in there, but that the macaroni was made from corn. It was very nice. So it's not that I couldn't eat any corn chips with my current dental growth, it said I had to eat them another way. And let me see, another thing that I had a problem with, oh, nuts. The hygienist said don't eat any nuts. You probably eat nuts because you like healthy food. So um, I was uh, researching about soaking your nuts. I, I still have them soaking, the walnut nuts. I don't know how soft they'll get. So, my uh, favorite soft thing to eat is uh, refried beans, the vegetarian ones that don't have lard in it. Um, you know, they'll e they will either not have any oil at all in it, or they'll have something like soybean oil. And even though I eat healthy and a lot of fiber, I still have to, you know, push myself away from the table, you know, I want more, of course. It's not real hunger, it's just appetite and it tastes good. And uh, one of my uncles said back in the 50s, um, he was always overweight, and he said, you know, I just heard that the best way to uh, get slim, lose weight, is to just push yourself away from the table when you still want more. And um, it's, it's still true. Uh, I was in a Chinese restaurant once and uh, we had finished our meal and we were leaving and I said to the host there, the man at the cash, cash register, why is it that, that all of your employees, nobody's overweight, what do you all eat? And he said, well, we don't eat bread, we don't eat super sweet desserts, and uh, we eat a lot of vegetables and we don't overeat. I think, I think that's, that's all that he said. And uh, I know they eat a lot of fish, especially uh, shellfish and, and exotic fish. But I had read once that it's considered very rude and, and unseemly to take a second helping of anything in, uh, in the Asian community. So I, I don't go to Chinese restaurants anymore because uh, I don't know the ingredients. Uh, in Miami recently, the family uh, took me out to eat a lot. 
and so I was very careful what I ordered like they went to an Asian restaurant I ordered steamed tofu and some kind of chicken um, I really don't eat fried foods in fact the new stove I got about a year ago I haven't fried anything on it I kept thinking of of keeping everything nice and new especially the uh, the little fan in the hood uh, usually those things get covered with lots of tiny little spots of grease and so I haven't fried anything and um, I think that's better uh, most of fast food restaurants fry almost everything so uh, I like to invent uh, new recipes and, and, and be creative and uh, what I bought recently was something I don't remember ever buying. It's cornmeal, but it's pre-cooked. And for some reason, uh, whenever I used to try and make flatbread, it, it always, it was nice, you know, the first few hours, and then it would turn, you know, hard like a rock. But when I used this pre-cooked cornmeal as part of the ingredients, then it stays soft. Uh, what I made yesterday is still soft. You you can bend it and um, you know you can you can uh, squeeze it and it like bounces back. So that's something to try and that's a frugal item also very inexpensive. And uh, I'm still trying to be gluten free except I do buy the sprouted wheat flour because I I read in several places that the sprouting process, the little sprout when it's growing, uses up a, a good portion of the gluten. So, so far it's, it's not bothering me. I had a really bad taste in my mouth for like two years. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And finally, um, I had stopped so many things. I stopped the dairy, um, stopped the restaurants, and I had one, one more thing I could try stopping to see if it would help me. And that was gluten, and that's what worked. And that bad taste in my mouth went away. No doctor could help me. No dentist could help me. You know, so sometimes you you have to be your your own uh, health practitioner. Um, I, I do go to doctors. I want their opinion. I mean, they study for so many years. They know so much. Although the new doctors are not like the old ones. We had a doctor in, uh, let me see, it was, it was the early 70s in, um, in Miami. And most of the doctors uh, back then, it's not like today, they would, they would sit back in their office, their private office with, you know, all their books on the wall. And the nurse would bring you into their office and you'd sit down and he'd be there with, with a big desk. And... And they're watching you. They even watch you walk in. They're observing already. They're starting to, you know, try and figure out you know, what they need to do to help you. So I went there um, with a relative, and and this doctor's watching us walk in. We sit down. We're very young, and he says to my relative, "You have flat feet, don't you?" <laughs> and the guy said. How do you know I have flat feet? And he said, the way you walk. So see, and so then you tell the doctor your problem. It, no rush. You know, he wasn't thinking about insurance and how much money he could make and the next patient, and he has to see 40 patients a day. Uh-uh, uh-uh. So he listened to you very carefully, very friendly, very social. And, you know, then they'd tell the nurse to take you in the exam, examining room. This was phase two. First, first the interview, then the examining room. Then he examines you. And then he, then he goes back in his office and you, you know, dress or whatever you need to do. And he tells you to come in his office when you're ready. Then you go back in his office. This is phase three. And then he'd tell you his decision, you know, what, what he thinks wrong and what you should do, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you have a pain, um, you were nauseous or whatever. Um, you know, he thinks you have um, a, a low blood sugar problem, whatever. 
and then you say goodbye and that was it that it and the whole thing was like like an hour not this 15 minute thing that they do these days so there are very few doctors I've known in my life now this is not just from my private health life it's from being a nurse think about that all the places I've worked all the doctors of all those doctors there's less than five I could count that had instinct and not just instinct but they really care about you you know you you could tell so well, anyway my dentist that I have now she's like that and thank heaven um, I'm, I'm surprised because I guess you don't have something for a long time you think you'll never have it again but and it's nice in this modern times these modern times to uh, have a physician like that again so those are my thoughts and um, write me I love to share information and experiences and uh, I'll just uh, keep discovering the mystery of getting older and and it, it can be interesting um, make the best of it that's the whole secret to life whatever happens make the best of it